Hello there, I'm Black Bright. For those who are visiting my channel for the first time, I hope you find it interesting. Please subscribe, share and like by clicking the hands up or there's a red subscribe button just underneath the video. Um, yeah, I decided to um, discuss criticism today, which is a bit out of my normal realm of things that I discuss. But I've been noticing a lot of criticism, not only, I mean, we all criticise. I criticise DWP, I criticise the Home Office. I tend to criticise anything or anyone I feel who's behaving unjustly or unfairly or taking advantage of people um, through my own perception of things that is based on my values and the type of person I am. So I tend to criticise for that purpose. But you'll find that there's people who criticise, it can be constructive, crit crit the constructive criticism or projective or what we call destructive criticism and that is criticism that comes from their own insecurities wanting to humiliate you put you down because they feel as though you may be more competent than them you might be um more attractive to them them or you know so some people just criticize for the hell of it just to make them feel better about themselves so um my background to do with criticism is that I was raised in a very critical environment as a child. I found it very discouraging. Um, it took me a long time to get into myself, to accept myself. And But I know that when my parents um, chast well criticised me, it was more or less to... Um, they wanted to me to be a certain type of person based on who they were. They wanted me to attract a certain type of person into my life. So therefore, they'd prefer me to look prim and proper and to behave in a certain way. It wasn't meant really to um, make me feel less less worthy or to make me feel less confident or to make me feel insecure but at the time as a child or a teenager growing up that is how it makes you feel it makes you feel as though you're not good enough and so when my mother um yeah she had a preconceived notion of what was acceptable and she felt that the way I used to dress, because I was quite rebellious, would alienate me from success. So that was her, as far as I'm concerned, as an adult reflecting back why she criticised me so harshly and so often. I mean, my mum still criticises me now. My father is deceased. She still criticises me now, but I don't, I take it on the chin. It doesn't bother me. I know that's just the way she is. It's the way she prefers things to be. And that's how a lot of people, um, that is why a lot of people criticise. Now, I put um, here that criticism mustn't be confused with constructive feedback. Um, sometimes people criticise because they feel that based on their experience and um their wisdom, they're in a position to tell you what is correct and to try to correct your behaviour or something that you're doing. But we mustn't react to that all the time. We have to bear in mind that that is their opinion based on their perspective. It doesn't mean that it's true. Um, and when I'm saying it mustn't be confused with feedback, because feedback tends to have a more positive connotation. Because when somebody's giving feedback, they tend to have looked at the positives that you've done, they'll acknowledge the positives you have done, and they'll show you ways you can improve. And when they, they're not just saying you've done something wrong, they will provide solutions. And they will more or less say why they think it's that way. And you can agree and you can have a discussion and you can agree to disagree. So with criticism, it, you have to remember it's based on individual opinion and individual judgment. It's not necessarily true. You can look at the criticism and think, is there something true about that? Is that criticism legitimate? And if it is, you can take it 
and look at it and evaluate it, change the way you're working, change the way you're behaving, and you don't have to feel um, defensive about it. It can actually be used to empower you, make you feel better about yourself and to improve. I think where criticism is destructive is where there's no balance, when somebody is constantly criticising you and never praising you, never ever looking for the good you do, but only picking up on the bad. But that only means that that person has an issue or the individuals have an issue um, with with, uh, you know, with whoever they are around, if they cannot see any good in people or they find it difficult to compliment people. So if that happens to you, just take it on the chin, realise that that, it, that person has an issue with themselves. And it usually stems from insecurity, vulnerability, maybe resentment that, you know, they feel that they're not on an even playing field. And sometimes it's power play. Sometimes it's narcissistic behaviour. Some people don't like to be confronted or they don't like confrontation and they expect people to agree with everything they say. And if you don't, they find that a reason to criticise but so when you're thinking about criticizing do look at it in perspective and see where it's coming from um the definition of criticism taken from cambridge is to express the disapproval of something or someone on the basis of perceived faults or mistakes and that's what i'm saying you know that person is that person's perception of what you're doing it's not, and that person, how that person perceives what you're doing as a fault, but it doesn't mean that it is, unless, you know, like in the workplace, <coughs> sorry, in the workplace, you can, you can have a line manager who faults everything you do, or you can have a line manager who picks you up on the odd thing, and you can look at that odd thing and think, yeah, she has a point. That's not criticism, that's not destructive criticism. And we would hope that that same line manager would also show you, would also tell you when you're doing something well. So you, you can see it as a balance. Um, I put here, people criticise for various reasons. And I took some of this from psychology today. Um, someone is behaving unfairly, someone taking an advantage. Even, you know, that's like what I was saying about my videos and you know, about the, when I get really angry and frustrated because I really do feel as though the government and people in power take advantage and unfair to the civilians of this world. So yes, I, I strongly criticise a lot of their, their practices and their policies. Um, so I put here destructive criticism, definition of that. They only tend to notice what's wrong. They don't give solutions, um, they do not recognise what's right, they're unable to make positive observations, and they project from their own values. And it doesn't seem to be negotiable. It just means that if somebody says that's bad, it's bad, because that's how they perceive it. Constructive criticism, on the other hand, observes, offers solutions uh, or suggest suggestions on how to correct um, Criticism is generally a negative opinion. It really comes over as a suggestion, but it comes over as a fact. And that's why people react to it. I mean, it's very hard not to become defensive. Nobody likes to be criticised, but none of us are perfect. So it's a life experience, a part of life to be criticised. So we have to build up some kind of resilience against it so it doesn't affect us. So we have to analyse whether or not the criticism is justified. Um, we have to look at the person who's giving the criticism to see whether or not it's coming from a genuine place. And there are other things that you need to do that I'll suggest later. Um, I did put this, we all need to learn from criticism, whether we like it, what we hear or not. The key is not being affected by it or react to it. It is the critic's opinion and it does not mean that they are right. Challenging criticism. You can challenge criticism depending on how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel worthless, angry, incompetent, insecure, unworthy, defensive, 
then you can challenge it and you can explain why it's making you feel that way. Um, like I said, people who've had a history of being criticised might be a bit more sensitive to criticism than other people who have not been criticised. So it is about understanding the background of that person. Sometimes you can't, you can't go into everybody's lives and say, you know, try to find out what kind of background they have and whether or not to be sensitive and whether or not you to be, um, whether or not you need to be, what you call it, um, compassionate. But to, the, the key is, is that always deliver your messages with kindness and sincerity and love. Because if you do that, whether somebody's had a critical past or not, they're not going to feel belittled or feel as though it's reinforcing how they already feel about themselves. And we don't want that to happen, especially with young adults growing up. Parents, I mean, especially in the West Indies, parents were constantly chastising their children and, you know, criticising them. And I remember one particular family where it ended up in murder. A mother constantly chastised her son and compared him to her daughter's husband and uh, some other members of the family saying he was worthless, he wouldn't um, go out to work. And she was doing this to try to edge him on and to prompt him on. But instead, he got felt so angry and insecure and resentful. He stabbed the mother, he stabbed the father, he stabbed the, um, the, 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 um, his sister's husband, and he also stabbed, but he didn't kill his sister. But that was the frenzy. And when you criticise people who are vulnerable and constantly criticise them, that can be the outcome. It's not your intention, a lot of our parents, it's not their intention to make children feel unworthy and resentful and angry. But that's what can happen. They can steal their confidence if there's no balance. And with a lot of parents, they think that it will push their children on to do better. But depending on the frame of mind of that child, it can have the opposite effect. So be gentle with your criticism. Um, so what else have I got here? The purpose of criticism. Purpose of criticism from the critic is to correct, to help based on their wisdom and experience. Um, sometimes they align it with their own values and their perceptions. So a lot of times when they criticise you, it's based on where they're coming from. Um, sometimes it's to assert power, to make them feel powerful. Somebody, sometimes people criticise just to think, oh, I know more than you, or I'm more powerful, or I'm better than you. That's why some people criticise. It's another way of putting somebody down so that they can feel better. Um, sometimes it's to neutralise the competition, like I like I said before. It's because they feel that whoever they're criticising is more competent than them. And so they'll find any little thing wrong with that person to make that person, in their mind, bring that person down a peg or two. So that person doesn't feel, even though that person may not feel, but so that person in their eyes doesn't feel as though they are as good as they are. Um, sometimes it's to speak up about, about something you don't like. Some people have a genuine... Um, reason and a sincere reason to um, criticise someone but they're not very skillful in how they deliver it so it can come over as negative or destructive but that is not their intention it's just the way that they are delivering the message and sometimes you have to look into that when you are reacting or becoming defensive or analysing where the criticism is coming from and whether or not it's justified or legitimate just look at that person and see whether that person, in the, in the way you know them, is coming from a sincere place. So you don't take it out of context. You don't take that criticism personally. Um, because we aren't all articulate in the way we deliver messages. Um, let's see what else I've got. Some people use um, criticism as a form of control, as a form of bullying as a way to intimidate, uh, to compensate for insecurities. Um, some people use criticism because they want to, it makes them feel important. It makes them want to be respected because when somebody criticizes, 
is based on the fact that I am better than you. I know this subject. I know about this. So therefore, I'm in a position to tell you based on my experiences. And what that does is that it makes that person feel important. And it makes that person um, feel that that other person is going to respect them for having that knowledge, for having that experience. But like I said, it all depends how the criticism is delivered. Um, some narcissistic personality. Now, this is an interesting one because narcissists, they love themselves and they believe they're the best thing since sliced bread. And they believe everybody should love them and they think you know, they can't see anything other than what's in their head about themselves. And so anybody who confronts them or anybody who doesn't agree with them or anybody who challenges them, they take it personally and they take it as an affront. And you'll find that narcissists critic, crit, um, criticise people the most. They criticise almost anyone because they just cannot they just see themselves as perfection. And so they see everybody else as at fault. And so they aren't, they, when they're criticizing, they're doing it from the basis that everybody else has got something wrong with them or they have to have something wrong with them and they'll work out what it is that's wrong with them. And when they can't find big things wrong with them, they'll look for the most trivial, the most trivial things to criticize. So that's the narcissistic personality. And if you don't get along with them, that's another reason for them to criticise because they'll blame it on the other person and not on themselves. Lack of social skills, I already mentioned that, that some people deliver well-meant feedback, but it's not done in a clever way or in a sensitive way or in a compassionate way. Um, I also put, be mindful how you criticise. Yeah, because we all criticise. And you have to ask yourself, where is that coming from? Is it coming from a place of insecurity? Is it coming from a place of hurt? Is it? Are we covering up something while we're criticising? Like I said, I've given a lot of examples before, so I won't repeat them. But we have to question when we criticise somebody about the way they look, um, what they like. You have to ask yourself, why am I doing that? If you criticise people about their achievements, why are you criticising them? Ask yourself that question. What is it about that person? Why I feel the need to criticise, especially if it's just flippant criticism. Um, so I put here, what can you do when you are criticised? I tend to repeat myself because I get ahead of myself. I've got it all in my head and then I put these down as reminders. Okay, first of all, when you're being criticised, ask yourself, is that person coming from a genuine place? Is there a balance between positive and negative? If the criticism is always negative and there's no positive feedback or compliments or anything like that, you know that that is coming from that person's um insecurities okay um is the criticism legitimate or justified that's another thing people can criticize and you can look at it like i had a situation when i was at work and they said to me um you're making too many mistakes silly mistakes they said and i got all it be in my bonnet about it I don't make me I don't make lots of mistakes. I picked up on the word lots because that's what I was doing. I was becoming defensive. I said, I don't make lots of mistakes. You're exaggerating. And you know, I went away and took time to reflect. And I I decided that what I would do is I would prove to my line manager that I wasn't making lots of mistakes. This was my defense mechanism kicking in. And what I did is I started writing down um, everything, every time I made a mistake. In my head, not, not even that it got to the point where it got to my line manager. And I did also wrote down why that mistake was made. And what I realised in doing that is that I was making a lot of mistakes. 
And it's because I was distracted. I was distracted by noise. I was distracted by people interrupting me. I was distracted by the phone going off. And so when I went back to the job, I, I lost my I lost my train of thought. I lost where I was. And, you know, a lot of times I try to do things on memory I, instead of checking back on the information I had. And yes, I made a lot of mistakes. And when I realized that, and I had my next one-to-one, -one, I said to my um, line manager, I said, you were right. I said, I did make, uh, I was making a lot of mistakes and I'm really, really sorry I didn't realize that. And I told her how I came to that conclusion and I explained to her that this was why it happened and these were the measures I was going to put in place to avoid distraction. One of them meant I put my earphones in if there was a lot of distractions, another one meant I'd write down every single thing I was meant to do. And when I got interrupted, I would stop the person from speaking to me until I'd written out the exact place I was at. It, it did go to quite an extreme um, method. But when, when you're working in a field where it does need to be precise, that is the measure I had to take. And once I did that, once I acknowledged it and everything was fine. But I could have taken a different slant. I could have really got defensive, start playing the victim card and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't. Okay, so ask yourself, is this person trying to be helpful? Another one, is the criticism, criticism being delivered privately or publicly? That's a big thing. Because if someone's criticising you in public, it means they're trying to humiliate you and embarrass you. And it's not coming from a good place. So if somebody's criticising you in private, it's much better. And you can discuss it and see if you can come to an amicable resolution where, you know, like I said, if it's based on one person's opinion, how valid is that opinion? Can you see that how that can benefit you if you adjust to suit their criticism? Is their criticism beneficial for you? And can you see the good in their criticism, regardless of how it's been delivered? Now, is the critic competing with you for status or position? Is it to cover up her anger, frustration and resentment, like I explained in that situation with that, that son who killed his family? Are they willing to listen to your point of view? Some people, when they criticize you, that's it, as far as they're concerned. That's um, their their word is law, and you can't even mention the re you can't address you can't address it because as far as they're concerned, you're wrong. I'm here to correct you, and what you say doesn't matter because this is the way it should be done. This is the correct way, and like I said, it comes from a very narcissistic attitude, or it comes from a very insecure attitude. Um, is it just a difference of opinion? nothing personal. Sometimes, you know, some people criticise and it's just a difference of opinion and that's fine, absolutely fine, as long as each person can accept that it's a difference of opinion. It's when one person feels as though they are right and the other person is wrong when it becomes a problem. And do they respect your right to have a difference of opinion? That's what I was more or less saying before. Um, and are they projecting their insecurities and issues onto you? So this is quite a long video, but I've nearly finished. Do they have different values or perspectives than you? Because that makes a difference of where the criticism is coming from. Are they judging you based on their perspective? Do they think that you're acting unfairly or taking advantage of a situation? That's, like I said, I think I've said that twice before. But that is usually why people criticise, because they do, you know, when you're being a bit positive. But there again, it's always from that individual's perspective. How not to react negatively to criticism? Accept that it's a part of the human experience. It's valuable for personal development and self-empowerment. Um... Do not react or become defensive. Think about it. Think about the reasons behind it, like what I've mentioned before. Where is it coming from? And um, and also analyse yourself, because if you have issues about, you know, if you're not feeling great about yourself, are you overreacting because you don't feel great about yourself? Where are you in that stage of life to do with confidence and self-empowerment and personal development? Um, 
detach yourself from feeling responsible for the other person's issues because when that person has issues of insecurity or narcissism or any other power play um, coming from that angle don't feel as though you have to be responsible for that person's issues detach yourself from those issues and deal with yourself um, because you know, like I said people will always criticize but you don't have to take it on and be compassionate and genuine, gen, gentle to yourself and be patient with yourself and the critic because in a nutshell when you're kind and gentle to yourself you're not going to do anything to harm yourself and you're not going to take on a bulldoze of criticism you're going to react well, you're not going to react, you're going to evaluate, you're going to analyse, you're going to think before you speak, you're going to be patient with yourself, you're going to be patient with your response, and you're going to be patient with the other person who has issues, who may or may not have issues, and try to understand where they're coming from. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.